The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon Eastern Time at 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. Technical Friday today. We can go into uh, the Chapman Wave methodology into a little bit more detail than usual. And we're going to do that right away. In fact, thank you, Tom and Steve, for two great hours. Uh, terrific lead-in. John Logan starts us off at 8 o'clock in the morning. We just go right through until 6 o'clock um, every day, and then the programs are archived. You can play them over and over many times. Uh, just education. That's what we're about. Now is, um, <laughs> you wouldn't have believed this if I'd said it last night when the futures were down 13. But we had... In the Chapman Wave methodology, uh, there's a technical uh, indication, indicator that I developed many years ago based on Richard Arm's Chun Index, the short-term trading index, and I, I just gauge certain levels, and they change over the years, but they've been very constant for quite a while. And what we had yesterday was a, a heads-up. That's what I call it. It says that within one to two sessions, this particular indicator, which, which has an unbelievable track record of about um, – 95%, maybe even higher accuracy rate. Um, once again, it gave that indication uh, last week, and we're seeing it again right now. And what it said was that regardless of how low we go, there should be a surprise move to the upside of at least seven to nine points in the E-mini futures, the S&P E-mini futures, which should translate into a positive reaction, action and reaction in the cash S&P. Lo and behold, we were down 13 points uh, last night, and then at about 4 this morning, we were still down very sharply, 5 was still down very sharply. Then out of the blue, for no reason at all, the market, the futures started to rally, and by the time the market opened this morning, futures were up very nicely, and, and, and the, the market popped up. Then there was the obligatory sell signal, because people didn't believe it. Uh-uh-uh, you've got to be careful here. Why? Look. You've got, remember, I've been showing this chart live right here. I, my, my subscribers get this with very detailed analysis every single day based on the Chapman Wave methodology and the Chapman Wave wave count. Remember, I spoke about those nine-day um, cup formations that went from a new all-time high to a brand new all-time high after pulling back. And it happened once. It happened to the, to the high of the 20th of June, 16,978 in the Dow. Whoops, another slide and then another rally to a new all-time high turn on the 3rd of July, nine bars later. And then nine days again on the 17th of July, 17,151, we get a turnaround and that became the top and it could be a top of consequence. Why? Because today's Friday and we'll see where the, the market uh, closes, but there's a real good chance that the um, Weekly charts are going to go from a sell, sell signal to a sell mode at 4 o'clock this afternoon. In the meantime, back at the ranch, that wasn't the issue. The issue was, if you remember, I talked about, I spoke to Tom about it on the air uh, when I was interviewed recently, that there was a price time match of the 7th of August as testing the May the 5th low of 16,341. The reason why we've been short and stayed short is that if that came in, and yesterday, intraday, it looked like it was impossible to hit that level. There was strength all around that. Out of the blue, selling comes in, and what happens? The low of the Dow goes to 16,333, um, eight points below the May 20th low bar that started the buy signal that went to a buy mode. And that is also where I was anticipating because the futures were down sharply when I started my uh, uh, early morning work at about 6.30 to, to 6.40. I sent out an email uh, – sorry, I sent out to my site the, uh, at tigertfnn.com. Um, I sent out a cover, your short position – and to in the in the volatility indexes, we are still holding 
the inverse short at this particular point, um, holding a little bit. But what I wanted to see <clears throat> was that there would be a turn here that said you got an exact Chapman Wave inside wedge price time. You see the pink dashed line? This is what we the subscribers have been looking at for, for quite some time. Right to the 7th of August. And that was very close to the um, the 200 period exponential moving average at about 16,290s. Close enough for me to say, at this point, we should be ready for some pretty decent bounce, an oversold bounce. Never thought it could happen based on all that news last night, but the tactical indicators were there. So basically what we're looking at is trying to take some long positions. We'll see if they're going to work. And we are trying to cover, well, we have covered some of the shorts. And in fact, we're much less short than we've been before. Four. And this is going to be a very important close. And Monday at this time, between 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock, tremendous amount of information is going to be imparted, imparted by the close today on the weekly chart and the open on Monday. So with that said, oh, uh, let me just mention that the Chapman Wave trend gauge gave a reading that said that within one to two sessions, there should be a very sharp rally in the E-mini futures, the S&P E-mini futures, which should translate to the S&P cash. Now, sometimes they occur over, uh, overnight or early in the morning, and by the time the futures, the cash opens, it, it does rally, but not quite as much as the seven or nine points. The futures, do you believe that the futures have gone from a low this morning, look at this right here, E-mini, from a low this morning of, uh, nine, uh, 18, 90.25 to 19.14 right now as we speak with a beautiful candle. Testing in the E-mini, they, it, there it wasn't uh, a left side, right side price time match. Um, this time, there was last time in, in the low that came in round about uh, on the 1st of August. But now we've gone lower, holding that pink dashed line, the Chapman Wave inside wedge right there, holding that line today as support, just nicked it by a fraction, but it did test the low that was the very next important low of 18, 89.50 that was made on the 27th of May. So, And you see that the stochastic has got a little V-shaped bottom here, the unbalanced volume, but the MACD is still very negative. So all I can say is that this should be a nice counter-trend bounce, and it could even take the E-minis uh, up 8.25 right now to the 1926, 1922 to 19... Um, 26 area. That's the nine period exponential moving average. This is a leg A, a very strong leg A so far in the E mini 120 minute chart. Now, what I was very disappointed about um, um, yesterday was that there was a peak A, B, C, D. That's what you expect in the Chapman Wave methodology. It leads to a peak D before you got to get cautious in the, in the 120 minute chart, and that's where it failed. But the rally was only from 1903 to 1925 so that's 22 points going all the way from a peak a to a b to a c to a d that is one of the smallest rallies that's why i was not surprised that there was a turnaround last night i didn't expect it to be quite as deep but that the, the conflagration um in iraq was the issue and what we're looking at right now is that we've gone back into that rectangle formation we should start hitting some resistance very soon but back at the ranch um, let's see, question in the gem. Basil on the trend gauge, when it is over 1.5, can you expect a rally or 2 or 2.5? Can you explain the indicator again? Does it work best at extremes? Uh, peak, peak D in the gem, um, that's the one question out of all the questions that I ever get asked that I'm not prepared to give the answer to. I spent too many years trying to figure it out. Uh, to just blab and say it's this number uh, would be uh, defeat the purpose of, 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 of all the work that I did. That's number one. And number two is... It could be a moving target. I do not want to give numbers right now because I have found that over the years I've had to modify those numbers. So if you listen to me now and all of a sudden I've decided that the numbers that I've that I've uh, that I derive from the price performance have changed, 
uh, you will not know about it. So I'd just rather keep that. It's the one indicator that I'm keeping as a black box. <laughs> That's the way it is. So let's go through the numbers. We've got um, we've got the Dow up 74 right now. Very nice. Um, at 16,442, the S&P is up 8.55 at 19, uh, 19.17. Uh, you've got the comp index up 13, lagging some. Uh, at 43.48, you've got gold. Let me find it right here. The gold is down $1.20 at 13.11. Uh, you've got um, silver down $0.04 cents at nineteen ninety four. Now, this is going to be very interesting. I'm going to show you the dollar chart. Remember, this is Technical Friday, so I'm going to get a little bit into the technicals. I discussed that the dollar was probably going to make a peak G and not go to a D based on all the work that I've done uh, on the on the fast moving average that's the nine period differential of the MACD that's the green line and one of the reasons is that even though there was an instant restart there was never any very big break in the fast moving average at peak D it just kept solidly going up and even though it looks powerful in fact it turns out that very often you go to a G and then you decline quite sharply. Now look at this. To confirm it, oops, there it is. The 120 minutes went to a peak F as we were on air yesterday. And I said that um, seems to me that the, the dollar has made a top and that gold should rally, but I wasn't yet sure just how much it could rally. Well, well gold is uh, kind of rallying leg A. I want to see what happens over the weekend. If there's no real bad news over the weekend, um, there's a chance that Gold will just meander between a trading range of the highs and the lows, but not really break out just yet. Um, that's what I'm looking at, and not yet break down either. So let's go, because when the dollar comes back, if if I'm correct about the strength of the dollar, and that this is a shorter term uh, pullback, then we'll be seeing something else. Uh, let me just finish up with bonds, because it's really important that we look at bonds. Look at bonds right now. Strength. 139 and 29 30 seconds in the um, September contract. Look at this. This is the continuous contract US at US. It's either E or brand new A. Ah, uh, wait. Let me just double check here. Is that a B? So 138 and 16, 138 and 16 parallel highs. Mm, right now, I'm just going to say this is a potential E. Uh, and we'll keep it at that in the daily, but it's leg E in the weekly, and um, this is very strong action, and leg C, look, we haven't finished the month. It's, in fact, not even halfway through the month, but this is very important. That's the first time we're tackling in a very concerted way after a doji monthly. This is really hard to do in, in, in bonds, make a, done, uh, a monthly doji high and then break above it, so we're going to be watching this really closely. Um, uh, question in the day, would I do SCTY? Yep, I think I'm, I, well, actually, I just want to do the Euro, EUR, USD. Look at this, counter trend move, goes to a peak F in the Euro monthly, pulls back. Um, the, the weekly is just getting a nice candle that says, hey, I might have a bit of bounce here. And there it is, leg A in the Euro. I'll talk a little bit more about it, and then I'll take some questions to them. But we've also got Mike in Pennington, New Jersey, holding on. I'll be right with you, Mike. Dows up 71. Be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN. Dot com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN. Com. The path of least resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently. Recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN and you'll find the path of least resistance under trading newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. Basil Trapp and Tiger Technicians are out. Dow's up 63. and p is up 7 and a half. And we're going to go to Mike in Pennington, New Jersey. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, Basil. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Yeah. You'd I, like I, to uh, look at? Uh, Chipotle. I had a put on it i sold it this morning and uh i'm holding a put on on g pro oh, oh very interesting okay let's go to everything that you're discussing right now and that is cmg which is chipotle mexican grill is trading right now at 666.86 whoa folks remember that when the s p made its low of 666 anyway this is now cmg at 667.25 uh, down 4.59 uh it's got a peak e uh i call that the rogue wave in the 120 minute chart i've got um, a peak E in the Chapman Wave um, daily chart at uh, 686.05. Let me just type that in. 686.05. And it's now under the nine period exponential moving average and is a leg E slash C in the monthly in the weekly and i have to tell you that the weekly technicals are still very strong it's going to have to be the daily uh the daily chart that really drags the weekly uh lower and what's important is that the monthly has gone to a leg d not yet a peak d so everything about the technicals looking out has so far been very very strong shorter term there was that big spike on the earnings the other day that was on the um, on the 21st on the 22nd it gaps up huge it goes to six 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 seven 
667.90, pops up to 680, 686.05, and now it's back at that 666 level. So I think this is great. So you, so you took some positions. You've taken off one of your positions on the, on the put side with a very nice game. The real question is, is there going to be a rally here that corresponds to the market possibly having a little bit more of a rally maybe into Tuesday or Wednesday of next week? Or um, is, is CMG now in its own orbit having been one of the leaders in the stock market for quite a while, just one of the spectacular stocks? And my answer to you is, I believe that fund managers in this particular phase will automatically drift towards what has worked well for them up until now. And you've, you've seen that in many of the stocks that have just bounced back really quickly on any, any pullback. So if I was to suggest, what, what, what month is the put? Is it for um, August or September? Chipotle's put was September, and I sold it this morning. Um, oh, so you're out completely of that one, but you've got, put, uh, yeah. you've got another position that's in, in GoPro. Right, that's also September. I, okay, that so, yeah. so let's, let's do this. I'm just going to quickly wrap up the uh, CMJ. I think you took the, the, the bulk of this particular move out of Chipotle. Now, because it's down 0.67 when the general market is up 0.45, I'm going to say to you, your timing was just perfect, number one. Number two is I would keep Chipotle on my radar because if this becomes more of not, not a daily but a weekly bear market, then you're going to see lower lows and lower highs into the end of next week and the following week or at least a turnaround from any rally sharply by midweek. And Chipotle will be a big clue because if Chipotle does not – push above 672 to 674, that's the strong resistance I'd be looking at. If it does that, I wouldn't touch it right now as another put position, but if it starts to bounce and then starts to fail when the general market's rallying, that's a really good uh, indication that at least in the shorter term, you can expect that the 660 to 657 area will be the next testing zone in CMG. So GoPro is the other one, and GoPro, uh, folks, is, the, is this great camera that that people uh, put on helmets or wherever, and they take pictures of whatever is happening in the world. And it's just a great, great concept. Um, but I, I, th I thought that it was kind of a, there was a lot of hype in the very beginning when it came out, from the day it came out, in fact. And it came out, went to 28.65, was the low, uh, had a round number 33 high. Uh, that day, and then it just soared up to 49.90. Now it's giving back a chunk. So now you have a put, and that's a, a September put, right? Yeah. I'm going to recommend that this is some. Do you have one, or you have a, a, a bunch? Just one right now, and it's the 37.50 put, and I bought it when it was 40 bucks. So. Okay. So how? You know, I love your position. I think that this is going down. I think that it's going to test 36.10, and if it breaks under 36.10, GPRO is trading at 37.48, down a dollar 22 right now. Yeah. If it breaks 36.10, there's a chance that this could pull a Facebook, and this could, in fact, start to go underneath the 28.65 low, and then somewhere a little later on, maybe in uh, – Later in September, October, it could become a really strong stock if, if it starts to hold support very well. Give me one second. I just want to look at the 120-minute chart. We've got, can you hold? Yes. Okay, we've got a break coming up, folks. We are on right now with Mike and Pennington. We're looking at GoPro. I'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We are back, and we are looking at, we're with Mike in Pennington, New Jersey. We're looking at, we were looking at CMG. He got a great uh, trade in his option. Now he's got another option, GoPro. It's a put option for September, and right now GoPro is at 37.48. He, he got it away when it was up in the 44, so he's, in, he's looking good right now. I have this coming down to test. The, it's at 37.45, and I think 36.10 is what's going to test. If it breaks under, this is the bar that breaks the left side. There's a pattern in the Chapman Wave methodology. It's in Chapter uh, 17, and it, it's, this is slide 334, and it shows the H formation, and this, this lowercase h, which you can see right here, where you've come down from 48.41 in the 120-minute bar, straight down to the low at about 38.35, 
at 11.30 in the morning on the 4th of August makes this H pattern look it's like a little arch formation. Retest, retest, and then pop! Today it broke down and went under it. This is the bar that either has to go back to try to get above 30, uh, let me see, 38.35 at the close. But if it closes very sharply lower, it says, nope, you're going to probably fill the gap. That's that entire gap from the little doji candle on the... Uh, 14th of September from 30, 37 was the high. The next day gaps up and 38.23 is, is, is the low bar. So that's the gap that's being filled. And I suspect that 36.10, the low of the 14th, is really going to be tested and tested quite soon. So I, I'm going to recommend you stay in this position. There could be a balance at some point, but everything about the chart says... Uh-oh, that nine-period moving average at 40.05 is really strong resistance, so any rally should fail. I suspect that if I recommend to you to keep holding it, that this will be a very nice trade for you, but there might be a little bounce by Monday afternoon or Tuesday just to try to get back to do a little retesting of the uh, high 37 area, maybe 38.20. But I, I think it's going down. I think you've got a good eye. You've got a really nice position. So um, I hope that helps, Mike. Yep, that helps. Thank you. Appreciate it. Th thank you. And I just think you've got a way overboard from the IPO. It just needs to digest it, and we'll see yeah. what happens with GoPro after that. Well, let's go on to, we're coming back to uh, Massachusetts. We're going to Framingham. We're going to Charlie. Charlie, how are you? I'm fine. I uh, calling you about Priceline. I okay. was actually following what Larry had said a while back. He says cover at 12.25, and I was going to reshort again. And I was hoping it would come to the 1,350, maybe 1,380 again. But uh, today it's uh, not breaking the 1,300. So I want to get your opinion where you think it is and maybe where it's heading to. But I want to bring to your attention that on Monday is earnings day. Oh, Monday is earnings. You see, I have. if you hadn't told me that Monday was earnings, I would have said to you the way I'm looking at this price line is if it – at 1273.77 down 11 PCLN PCLN is the symbol right great company had a fantastic move it's in a rectangle digestive phase in the monthly chart the weekly chart failed to get back to the 1378.96 peak d high it's making what i call a potential we don't know yet but a potential right shoulder failure pattern if it does take out at this point is a 12 uh, 73 if at any point it starts to break under 1250 there's just a very good chance that the technicals will deflect lower and then it's going to go lower and the daily if you never told me about earnings i would have said i would be looking I would be prepared to be short price line right now, even though it's a fantastic company in a great area at this particular stage. It looks to me like it's going to break down and it's going to get to the 12.40, 12.20 area within five to seven sessions. That's the way it's looking. And especially today when the market's rallied so nicely, it's acting very poorly. Now, I, I found that trying to do this, there are occasions where we've had positions and we've held the positions, Facebook was one of them, into earnings because I just felt so strong either about a down move or an up move. In this case, it was the up move for Facebook. Um, in this particular instance, there could be anything, and it could still be. It's got an alternate count, E slash C in the weekly chart. If there's a successful um, – um, if there is the response to the earnings report, if it's very positive – does it come out after the bell? I think it does, right? I think in this one, this time is going to come ahead of the bell. Okay. Well, if it comes ahead of the bell, that will be an instantaneous reaction because it won't have to wait all the way through um, the uh, the conference call over the, during the evening and then to see what's assessed. And then by the time the 9.30 bell opens the next day, we could be anywhere. But in this case, all it needs is to break above 1307.09, and then the alternate count becomes F slash D. And that says, oh, now you've got to be very careful because, in fact, any pullback could, could be time and price. So I don't, I've learned over the years to try, unless I feel very confident, and we're already in a position that says if we're wrong, we now could only lose 5 to 7% rather than a big gap of 15 or 20%. I, 
you have no position right now. Is that correct? I actually, I'm, I am down to my base position, which was in the high 1300s and from a long time ago. But my other positions I've covered. Okay. So I'm going to throw this out as a suggestion. But the suggestion is, first of all, I'd like you to also check to see if the earnings come out prior to the opening or after the, after, at the closing bell, yeah, number I, one. I will double check that. Now, number two is, what I would like to do is just to offer you something that I'd look at based on my analysis, not the reaction of the market. And this is what I would say, that if you are short of the 1300 area, that's 23 points. For, for, face, for Priceline to gap up 20% on an earnings report, it's done some pretty big things before on earnings. So it is a possibility, which means that you would lose the gain that you have right now. If, in right. fact, the um, earnings report, regardless of what it states, is taken by the market to be negative, then instead of, say, close right now at 12.73, it could gap down, it could easily gap down 10 points. So that's a 10-point opportunity that you would lose if you were still holding the stock. So it seems to me that it's more difficult for you to put it in a buy stop because it's going to be reacting very quickly. It could overshoot your buy stop very quickly and you might not be able to get out. You've got to say to yourself, you've got a 27, about a 25, 27 point gain right now. You'd be giving up 10 extra points if it gapped down. But if it gaps up, you're going to give away all the gains that you've just made. So my, my impression right now is that because you have a good gain at this particular point, if price line gaps down, you'll know that at any point a, a rally is a shorting opportunity. So you know that the trend has changed in price line, at least in the shorter term. So you'll be able to get another opportunity to short. So think about maybe taking maybe all of it off right now, just cover it or half off and know that you've got at half a gain and if you give back that other half you kind of a break it's a break even trade but i i would definitely think it through in terms of saying i've got my gain in hand at this particular point if it gaps down i'll lose maybe 10 or 12 points but in fact if there is a bounce by tuesday or wednesday that might be an opportunity to, to reshort it and i'm starting fresh so you so the opinion right now is that you've got a gain. I'd be thinking of maybe taking it off, at least taking two-thirds off, maybe one-third. You can just keep as an experiment to see whether or not you were right or wrong. But a gain is a gain. You know, you want to do short to make money, and it would be a pity if you aren't in it if it gaps down 20 or 30 points. But I, I, the way I'm looking at it now, it really depends on your – your temperance on on how how upset you would be if you if you lost that that gain because it it went against you it spiked up or how upset you'd be if you got out and it continued lower but i'm of, of the opinion that it, especially in a very high price stock like this 12 1273 30 points 27 points that's a nice gain um, mm -hmm. I think I think you'll have an opportunity to reshort it. If there wasn't earnings, I wouldn't even be talking to you about this. I'd say, you know what, lower your stop on half to twelve eighty five. Keep the rest where it is. Try to keep it as a core. My my everything about it says that it should be going down. But I'm only talking to you about money management. I so, understand. So that's that's the way I would deal with it. And you know what, Tuesday, Wednesday, you can call me again. We'll see if it's a possibility to short. If it, if it if it gap down and if it gaps up, it still might be a short. But at this particular point, I think it's trapped in a trading range between about thirteen hundred on the upside and about eleven seventy five. And anything any any break below eleven seventy five, uh, no, I'd say yes. Any break is the monthly chart, eleven seventy five, and you'd be looking at something very different. And um, that's about the best I can do because the technicals on the daily chart, the MACD is still good, but the stochastic is starting to, to decline. Price is declining. These are two ugly bars from yesterday and today. 
and the the weekly chart says it could be a right shoulder failure. So it's the earnings that that makes me hesitant to say, hey, just keep the position and hold it. Other than to say to you, if you've had really good gains and you're prepared to say, I'm prepared to give up the gain on this rather than than go in and go out, go in and go out. If you're prepared to do that, I would stay with a short position. That's a different thing altogether. That says, I've made some money. This is a different situation because if it really gaps down, I'm in at a fantastic level. I can start having shorter-term trades over and above my core position. Is, is, does, am I making myself clear? Yes, you have. Uh, and, you know, for my dilemma was I was hoping that it would higher more so I can short. Not that it went the other way, but I hate chasing things on the way down. I'd rather short on the way up. So I understand. I, that's, made it clear. That, that's the reason why I said if it gaps down, you'll have to wait, and then the next bounce will tell you the trend has changed, and it's 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 a more secure short, in fact. So okay. I hope that helps you, Mike. Thank you very much. I appreciate thank, the help. Thank well. you very much for calling. That's Mike and Pinkton. Let's go to oh, that's Charlie and Framingham. Sorry. So thank you, Charlie, and let's go to Lou in Nashua. Hi, Lou. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, just looking at oil, what do, what, what's your take on oil? Well, my take on oil is this. I'm a little surprised uh, on, a, um, on a socioeconomic uh, level, a geopolitical level, let's put it that way, that crude oil isn't rallying at this particular stage because of what's going on in the Middle East and what's going on now in, in, in Iraq. Um, Crude oil should, in fact, be pushing much, much higher. But, in fact, I've spoken about this before, that in the USO, um, in the USO, which is the United States Oil Fund LP, that has been going down from a peak D in the um, weekly chart. It's way below the nine-period moving average, the exponential moving average. It's way below the 200-period exponential moving average at 37.72. It's at 36.04 right now. And the technicals in the weekly chart haven't yet started to form any kind of a base. There is a level that it should have held, uh, 35.96 and 35.97 uh, from back in early May. Um, it went a little bit lower today. It's, it's above it right now, but it went to 35.82. Yeah, it was a little bit lower. Um, so the daily chart is the one that would be the shorter term that says any rally should, in fact, it should have been unfolding as we speak. Right now, I should be saying, wow, look at, look at the USO. It's up uh, 75 cents at 36.80. And, in fact, it's at 36.03 down 13 cents. Are you looking for a position to go along the actual contract itself? Uh, yes, uh, on, on the futures, yeah. No. So would that, would that be the December or the September? Probably the December. December. Okay, so that's the Z contract trading right now at 95.78. Yeah, you see, I, you know what? I, I know that there could be a sudden spike in oil, just as there could be a sudden, be a sudden spike in gold. It hasn't yet happened. I don't see the fear trade working at all in any of these mediums, and I do see the dollar coming down. Um, uh, but it's the, the weekly and the monthly chart of the dollar still look good. So I've got to put crude oil in a different category here because it would be impacting the market negatively if, in fact, it was rallying and it's not. I have to tell you, Lou, I'm just going to say I don't see a trade right now. Uh, I don't see a trade either on the short side or the long side. You like to hold for a couple of weeks, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see that right now, other than to say there's a possibility that crude is saying it's not going to rally, that it's going to fail, and it's going to be coming down. But I just don't have a trigger for that to say to you I'd be going short. Um, the 120-minute chart has pulled back some, but I think I just think it's stuck in a trading range for now. I, I've got a feeling by, by Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning of next week, I'm going to have a much clearer picture on crude oil. So I'm going to have to say to you, I can't give you anything right now other than to say I wouldn't have any position in crude oil right at this particular time until I get a little bit more of a sense of a bottoming process or a topping process. So I hope that helps you, Lou. Yes, it always does. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much for calling. Lou in Nashua, and let's see, the Dow is up 69, S&P is up 7.5, and, and I'll be right back. Basil Chap and Tiger Technicians out. Oh, I will be doing a Daryl's show at 1 o'clock. So after Nico and Paige, I'll be back again, and I'll be doing Daryl's show. I'll be right back.
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Learn about good health and fitness. Living a primal lifestyle with Nico and Paige. Next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. We want to look at the FXI, which is the iShares China large cap ETF trading at 40.34, up 48 cents. There's a pattern that I follow very closely. Uh, first of all, yes, the Chapman Wave notation on it. and But there's a pattern that I follow that goes like that. And then it goes like that. 
And it says that unless the FXI is able to push and close above 4113 to be able to tackle the 4130 uh, recovery high peak in the daily, there might be an arch formation. And if you look at the weekly, remember, we're always looking for Ds, at least Ds or Es, the fourth highest uh, peak. And this is going to C, and this is leg D, and there's a good chance that it makes a peak D with a doji high. So just be a little careful. Yeah, the technicals are still very good, but the price action isn't quite as good. So if the FXI breaks into the 42s, by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, that's really good action. But if it breaks under 38.92 in the weekly chart, that's saying ah, uh, you got to be somewhat careful there. Um, in the monthly, there's just a sideways trading band that's been going on forever, but it has broken the resistance and says, yes, I'm going to try for the 41.92 to 42.20 area. We'll watch it closely, but in the meantime, my assessment is that it's done very well. This is the big, uh, the big cap uh, China index, FXI, and, uh, but it, it needs definitely to push uh, one and a half, about a point, about at least a point higher to be able to break out, a point and a quarter, let's say. So um, I don't have an opinion right now whether I go long or short it because it's already had a big move. But I will be thinking that it's a great short if it breaks under 39.50. Or if it goes to 40, so 40.35, if it goes to 40.55, and the next day it's trading at 40.35 again, that would say the H pattern is going to retest the lows. Next step is a DDD was a question. So this is 3D systems. Oh, what a lousy chart. It's still got a long way to go before uh, I think it's going to make some kind of a base. It's at 47.94. DDD trading down 58 cents at 47. Uh, 98. They're not participating. Look how nicely the market's doing after being down 13 points in the futures and now up nine. Um, these guys that don't participate right now are, are in trouble. And this has got the Eiffel Tower. Look about it in the weekly. Yep. I, if you're short, I'd stay short. I'd put a stop on part of my position at about 50.60. Um, but I, I think that it's going to at least retest the lower 46.05. So um, and what I'm going to do in Daryl's um, session at 1 o'clock that I'll be taking uh, for him uh, will be to show you some, some of the techniques of, of how you can – how I look at – resistance and, and price on a mechanical basis, purely a technical basis uh, that are generated. And at the same time, um, I'm also going to tell you that I don't use it very often. <laughs> I use it more for demonstration purposes because I use Chapman Wave almost all the time. And that's been, you know, just it's been quite successful as far as I'm concerned. So um, we're about to break. You're going to have Nico and Paige coming up. Hey, living a primal lifestyle. It's just, it's just a great show. Listen to it, and I'll be back one hour later to do Daryl's show. And before, I'm cutting I'm cutting this a little fine here because I do, do not want to talk over the music that comes on. And so I'll be back with a diagnostic trading hour. Most importantly, let's do this. This is, this is a retracement, a very important retracement, and it could go into maybe Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. But most importantly, the volatility index got repelled at the resistance line. It's at 16.39. I suspect it's going to go down to the between 15.10 and 14.30. That's the area that I'm be looking at to say, hey, is this the time to get back into the long position on the VIX? We've taken off our for really nice gains. We've taken off um, almost all our positions in the TVIX. We've kept a tiny little bit because that's the, as a longer term buy and hold. But the, the XIV, which we have, the inverse, we are still short, and uh, but we've, we've taken some of the gains, and I, I, we've kept just a little bit there as well. So um, we are going to be looking to reestablish those very soon, and I'll get a little bit more into the technicals on that aspect of levels to watch when I do Daryl's show. Hey, have a wonderful day if you can't stay. Otherwise, listen to Nick Owen, Paige, and then I'll be back in an hour. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.